It was to be a really tough test for 26-year-old Richie Bell Bates. To the, well, I've got obviously no arms, <laughs> but I've got a finger here and a finger here. This one's broken, so it just flops about. Um, I, I've got quite a nice chest, <laughs> as you can see, but there's no reason for it. It's just luck. Um, no one knows what it is. Richie's condition defies medical explanation. In the womb, his hands and arms simply didn't form, but he's never considered this to be a disadvantage. Since childhood, he's learned to use his feet as hands. This one is, is what I do everything with, my right foot. And this foot is, is the one I, I just hold things with this one. Looks worse than it is, really. <laughs> Disability forces self-reliance, but it was always going to be a challenge for a man without arms to cope with the demands of such a physical trip. Mission impossible. The way, way certain parts of me are feeling at the moment it might be. He went on the expedition to prove what he was capable of. His abilities amaze me. But his lack of arms meant he struggled in the harsh conditions. He couldn't keep his feet dry and they started to break down. There's a few sort of people who are feeling, feeling the strain at the moment, including myself. With blistered and filthy feet, life became really tough for Richie. These boots were cut into my feet. My skin started sort of peeling off in places and things. It's just got nasty, really. He battled on for 150 kilometres before being forced to leave with illness. Hiya. Oh, hi, Ken. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How it's been two years since I saw Richie, and I've come to his local pub, where he's the current pool champion, to catch up. Thank, thank you for that, for that non-event. From the start, Richie was caught up in arguments. There was division from day one. There seemed to be two groups. There seemed to be the people that were born disabled and the people that have become disabled. Tim, Heidi, Cholton and Kate formed a group who wanted to go as fast as possible. Another group, including Richie, Kim and Mark, were much slower. How are you doing, Kim? When we started walking, there was Mark and um, Kim at the back, and I stayed back to help them. And everyone else seemed to rush ahead. It's not a race, it's supposed to be a team effort, and you're not in the team. Really? Is that fucking right, Richard? Is, mate. is that fucking just, right? Can we just call it? We don't need to have this. It wasn't a race. At the end of the day, you're only as fast as your slowest person. Some water for Richie. Do you want some of this stuff? It's really tasty. It's better than water. Richie stood up for the slowest members of the group because he could empathise with them. When you've had a disability all your life, you tend to understand it more than if you've become disabled. Now, if you become disabled, you tend to concentrate on, on yourself and you don't realise that other people need help. I think people just didn't realise how people were struggling and, you know, that was, that was a big problem. But Richie wasn't just struggling with group dynamics. Seeing all this wet shit and being wet, and it's not amusing at all. I'm not feeling at all comfortable at the moment. I just feel like I want to go home now. For someone whose feet double as their hands, keeping clean was imperative. And in the wetlands of Africa, this was far from easy. That like personal hygiene is the main main problem, really. Just trying to stay clean and trying to keep my feet clean and everything, because obviously they're, they're in my hands as well. A lot of little issues, really, that you don't think about when you're home uh, until you actually get here and you're dropped in the deep end. After eight days, the team had covered over 100 miles. And unbeknownst to the group, Richie was suffering with amoebic dysentery. Who else wants a tuna sandwich? Rich. No, I don't. You've got to eat, mate. I didn't want to eat because obviously it just came out the other end. No, I don't. He hadn't told us he was feeling ill, so there was little sympathy. 
Fine, fine, honestly. Mm. But don't make a big deal of it, King, because you're just well, giving it. It is a big deal, mate. If, if you can't, it is a big what deal. Do you, what, what do you want to eat, Richard? I'm not going to eat. I'm too covered in shit. I'll make myself ill. Richie, why don't you want to eat anything? I don't want a fucking big deal about it, Heidi. Fine. His lack of arms was making things too difficult and dangerous to continue. I don't need a lot of help going to the toilet, but sometimes I need, you know, might need a bit. You have to know where the line is, and I didn't want to lose my dignity on, on TV by, you know, soiling myself in, you know, in the middle of the desert. At the end of the second week, it became too much for him, and he decided to leave. I'm sorry if I'm letting you down and, and sort of going off and leaving you and abandoning you, but it's just a lot more difficult than I thought it would be for me to sort of live in these conditions. And I just, I just had enough and my body can't take any more. I still regret it now, but there is that but there that, you know, I, I think I did the right thing at the end of the day. But those two weeks changed Richie, enhancing his thirst for adventure. He'd always had a passion for fast cars he'd never been able to indulge. Racetracks simply turned him away. When people saw what he did on the expedition, that changed. It's like being a kid again. But, but all your worries and everything just disappear and you just get in the car, hit the accelerator pedal and there's no other feeling like it. After the expedition, Richie moved to his own home in Chichester, started a relationship and went to college, where he trained as a carpenter and joiner. I think I'm probably the first qualified carpenter using their feet. It's not really just a hobby. I'm actually qualified in it, and I've, I've done a lot, of, a lot of carpentry, you know. I've, I've built my own driveway and um, wooden gates. Unfortunately, he still can't get a job on a building site. I wrote off to lots of carpentry and joinery businesses, but the, the trouble is it's all the health and safety. That's a, that's a big issue because you've got to wear boots with steel toe caps on site. Obviously, I can't wear them because I've got my feet to use as my hands. So, you know, it's, it's a catch-22, really. His applications for loans to set up his own business were turned down. The trouble is, when you're a practical person like me, people don't think that you can do what you what you say you can do, so you really have to prove yourself. And if they can find someone able-bodied that does the same job, then, you know, they're going to pick them, aren't they? It's ever so difficult to get into the, the construction industry or any, anything practical when you've got a disability. Despite his problems in getting a job, I can't fault Richie's determination, and hopefully that drive will get him where he wants very soon.